welcome to Rev It Up with Earl Garnett. I'm your host, Earl Garnett. Welcome to another episode of Rev It Up with Earl Garnett. Today is kind of a bittersweet day in my garage. Uh, we've got the car 2017 Dodge Viper GTC, a car that I've been looking for my whole life, but all my failures prevented me from being able to afford one. So welcome Shane <laughs> and welcome Cheryl. And uh, why don't you guys tell us how you came about to buy this car? Cool. Well, I'll, I'll start because it's, uh, I kind of started it off and Cheryl helped support it. So um, the car started um, in concept back in around 2014, right? When the new Gen 5s came out and uh, we started looking at certain options and what we wanted to do and you know it wasn't something that we were going to be able to obtain right in yeah. Canada mm -hmm. and uh, so we picked everything out we sat at the computers and started monkeying around with um, enhancements uh, you know Dodge was nice enough to have you know some things that you could put together yeah. and have some visualization and uh, we put together a couple concepts and played off each other, a little devil's advocate about, well, do you like stripes? Do you not like stripes? Yeah. Do you like red? Do you like blue? Wow. So you ended up um, spending a lot more time kind of arguing, well, I like this color, yeah. or I like that color. So it was, um, it, uh, you know, it was, it was a lot of fun, right? And it was, you know, it was fun because you're kind of playing house at that time, right? Yeah. The big question is, whatever we developed, whatever we wanted, can you get it? Wow, so let me get this straight. See, me and my wife, we can't even decide what restaurant to go at. And also, uh, we, we can't even share a chocolate bar. So you guys bought a race car together. <laughs> yeah, I mean, pretty much, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So this car is a one of one, correct? Like That's there's right. no other car that has the same options, colors, stitching, whatever. That's right, for the 2017 model year, mm -hmm. there will, this, is, this is essentially what, what uh, FCA or Dodge would call it, this is your DNA, right? Wow. So nobody else has your fingerprint. So all the options picked have not been duplicated on any production uh, car for model 2017. Wow, that's very cool. And what made you decide to go with black? <laughs> well, okay, I'll take that black. one. Yes, please. <laughs> so in the process of playing with the online tool that Dodge Viper puts yes. out there, um, I think you can still play with it online, sure. by the way. Yep. Um, we, we looked at building the car with a bunch of different colors, and I kept coming back to black. So the black was something that I was pushing for from the beginning. Okay. Um, and just because I said, you know what, I don't want to get sick of it. I don't... Um, you know, and I love all the other colors and, you know, especially yeah. when we see them out and about can totally appreciate it. But to me, black is really classic and timeless and just looked mean and menacing and understated. And I think that was the biggest thing is we wanted it to look understated as much as a, a supercar can be understated. Yeah, it sure looks understated. Yeah. <laughs> well, like, and, and if you think about, like, how are you going to, right, like, how are you, if you ask an owner, a car yeah. owner, and you're, you're a car enthusiast, yeah. just like, I'm a car enthusiast. You can't ask me what your color, like, we'll never agree, right? So yeah. it was kind of nice to have yes. that relationship, right, in the house to say, you know, what, what's your color, what's that? Because yeah. you, at least you, you have a, a cooperation that's happening because car owners are always going to have their favorite color. Yeah. Whether, it's, whether it's gold mango, whether it's yellow jacket, yes. whether it's striker purple or, you know, striker green or, you that's know, right. tricolor purple. And so. some cars look better in sure. certain colors. Mm -hmm. right? Like, I'm a big fan of white on some cars, but yeah. I can't really see this car <laughs> in white. A uh, Z06 Corvette, however, mm -hmm. I love that in white. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. yeah, no, it's, it's very cool. And so you guys went down to the factory. Why don't you tell us about that? Yeah. Yes, we did actually. That was, and very recently actually, mm -hmm. we were able to go and tour the last public tour at Connor, uh, Connor Ave, right? Mm -hmm. the, the CAAP, the assembly plant, right? Where the Viper is built down in Detroit. And uh, we got to meet, I got to shake the hands of the people that built my engine and assembled the engine and mm -hmm. uh, the people cool. who assembled the car. And we got to see the Viper how it was dynoed on the rollers, right? Oh, really? And uh, a couple members from the group, they were able to kind of help assist and put some parts on, right? Oh, uh, wow. The rack to get it That's assembled. That's so really cool. It was nice to actually reach out and actually touch the people that helped build something that, um, you know, like is kind of, you want to be an extension of your own personality Absolutely. a little bit. So it was pretty intimate. That was um, the concierge, the Viper concierge program, I think is, is is bar none probably the best competitive advantage they've really? ever had mm -hmm. in the industry. Was there any sense of sorrow or anything knowing that this car is being phased out this year in the factory? Yeah, um, 
I, I think, based on the conversations we had with people when we were in Detroit, that there are big plans for that yeah. factory, but obviously they couldn't share that with us. So, um, so surprisingly, no. I mean, it was, I was kind of thinking the same thing, you know, it was the, you know, the last, uh, the last plant tour and, you know, everybody was there and uh, it was, uh, I don't know, it was more like a celebration than, than it being sorrowful. Let's talk about some of the exterior features of this car. Uh, so explain this hood to me. There's two ho hood options available, isn't there? Yeah, you're right. There's a, there's a six vented hood um, that, that comes on SRTs or it was okay. selectable through the GTC program, right? Um, and there's a GTS hood. And the GTS hood has two, right, heat extracting vents as opposed to the six vented hood. And then of course the ACR has open wheel cutouts as well. For even more airflow, right? When you deal yeah. with when you deal with the aerodynamics of the ACR, mm -hmm. um, which is it's at the extreme sense, right, of the word. And in this case, when we talk about the Dodge Viper GT and and what standardized it would have came with, it would have come with a GTS hood. So one of the options was to put the six vented hood oh, on okay. it, right? So this is this was selectable through the through the Viper One of One program, oh. right? So we elected to go with the six vented hood because I think it. To, to me, it, it speaks a little bit of, of the, you know, the, the old style, right? A Viper, yeah. when it first came out, it brings out that, that real snake-like character behavior, yeah. right? Yeah. But I think it also does a really good job, not that the GTS hood didn't, but it does a really good job of uh, kind of accenting the lines, right, of the car. Because the one thing that really brings to light the Viper versus a lot of other cars is it's, it's really curvy. Right? Yeah, it it's is. It's got a really curvy. nice, you know, bottle type curves on it. It's, yeah. you know, very voluptuous, right? So, and of course, outside of that, with the six vented hoods, um, we wanted to protect the car in all its curves, right? To do yes. that. So yeah. we did We did end up going with a, um, a full clear bra, right? Okay. Uh, application on it. So you end up, they ended up wrapping the entire car with a PPF, um, a Titan XT was the the brand that did it and and uh, the guys did a really good job applying it and yeah. it just adds some peace of mind to protect kind of you know the, the sexiness that yeah. the viper brings right to Absolutely. the world and so but you cannot wax it with that type of you typically you, you can give it a crack but yeah. in most cases um, you, you just basically wipe it off with some water it beads and mm. um, you know, you just have some peace of mind. It's self-healing, right? So then that way the paint underneath is protected, right? Um, because the Viper team and uh, the Prefix team that paint the car, they, they put a lot of work into the exterior. They really put in the wrench time when it wow. comes down to the paint and the, you know, the paint application process. Exactly. No, I think the wrap is a good idea because I got a black truck <laughs> and it's a friggin' nightmare. Like it was clean for three days after I bought it. Now yeah. it's like, what's even the point, right? Yeah. What's your favorite thing about this car? Oh boy, um, it's really fast. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, uh, you know, it's funny because uh, being a passenger in this vehicle is a is a completely different experience than being a yeah. driver in it. And as a passenger, which I am most of the time, yes. <laughs> um, and I'm perfectly happy to be, it's uh, it's great. Like it drives so nice, and it's um, it sounds great on the road. It's uh, it's kind of funny when you drive in this car. It's almost like you're in a fishbowl, yeah, and yeah. Uh, <laughs> you feel like everyone's everyone's kind of staring and looking yeah. at the car, not really quite sure what it is. Yeah. But it's just again, it's really unassuming, it's fast as hell, yeah. and uh, and it's sexy as hell too. Yeah, so. Yeah. So what's going to happen when you start driving this car more and more? Well, I think there's going to be some trouble. <laughs> Who's driving it? I'm taking it. No, you're taking it. There's going to be trouble. Not, yeah. not any trouble. It's yeah. just now we're going to have to find another one. That's, yeah, right. that's, the, solution. that's the solution. That's the solution. That's the solution yeah. to the problem is we're, you know, we're going right. to have to find another, uh, another snake to put in the driveway. <laughs>
cars that they're making now, anything high performance, they're making them fantastic. Yes. But some of the brands, some of the manufacturers are putting too many nanny controls in. Yes. And it's kind of taking making the driver a secondary component, yeah. right? And that freaks me out. Like I know that the Nissan GTR is an incredible car, but I've heard a lot of things about people saying it's kind of like driving a video game, you know what right. I mean? And, yeah, paddle shifters. Yeah. I, mean, I like a manual transmission. Me too. I'm a fan of it. Me too. I, I miss it when I don't have it. Yeah. Um, me too. And I hate it when I'm in traffic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too. So, yeah. Yeah. so um, I always liked it. I, you know, we wanted to drive it on the weekend and there was a little bit of weather coming and we weren't sure yeah. what it was going to look like. So, um, but I saw a red one, a red Gen 5 coming up the highway, yeah. coming south and I was. Jealous. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. I was jealous that day that I was not in mine and I he know, was in his. So. I know, we went up for Thanksgiving there the other day to my dad's house and I'm like trying to convince the wife and kids, come on, let's take the GT500, come on. <laughs> Nobody was having any part of it and then on the way there I was seeing nice cars go by and I was like, I'm in a minivan, right? That's now. right. It's like, what did I do wrong? Who did I upset? Exactly, yeah. Yeah, it's everything and more, right? And that was, that was the whole point. I mean, it was a long time coming, took a long time to to get it built and get it done and yeah. get the, you know, there just isn't the traffic, you know, Canada doesn't get a lot of these. Yeah. Well, that's what I like about it. I mean, the Corvette is awesome too, I get it, but the only one problem with Corvettes is that you, there's so many of them, you see them everywhere. Well, when you build 40,000 a year. Yeah, that's it, and people yeah. buy them, and I think there's a lot of reasons behind that. I mean, uh, they're, they're more user-friendly, especially because they some of them come with an automatic transmission. Well, and most so, people choose the automatic. Yeah, which yeah. to me, I, we don't get that, obviously, but, I understand why they sell more of them, but I would buy this car all day long over even the Z, Z old Oh, car one, like right? suspension, like left is yeah. left, right is right. It really, it's immediate. The throttle response is immediate. It really is a driver's car. Absolutely. I mean, there's no, there's no reason this car doesn't hold the road, right? And if it doesn't hold the road, then you're beyond the limits of the car. And That's right. I got news. Last time I checked, I not at that level where I can push this car even a tenth no, of its limits. No, so. that's it. I mean, everybody likes to think, especially men, that we're all race car drivers, but it's not true. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, like uh, you know, some of us are competent and do it, but guys that race cars, I mean, those guys are professional drivers. Yeah, you'll, you'll never train. take it to the limit. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for the next episode of Rev It Up with Earl Garnett. Okay, any special instructions get No, in? just fold yourself in just and be careful. Yeah. Should be good. Oh, I like the red seat belts. Ooh, it's pretty cozy in here. Go, Dad, go, play out of function